All right, so we're live. Uh, first ever episode of the Hockey Outsiders podcast, video podcast, should be interesting. We've got, uh, I'm Mike Jensen, live in Taipei, Taiwan. I'm a hockey fan. Whoever's next, go ahead. I'm Pete Bauer, uh, hockey fan, Sure Park, Alberta. Uh, that's about it. Yeah, you're over in Sherwood Park. I'm over in Mournville. Uh, oh, so we're on the opposite opposite sides of the Oilers planet. Uh, Richard really Keats, a hockey. What what the hell am I? Hockey. Um, Royalty. Butthole. No, no. I'm <laughs> sort of like a cross, be, uh, like a cross between an asshole <laughs> and Twitter. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how you call it exactly, but yeah, Richard Keats, a um, <laughs> Oilers something. Oilers personality, that's a good one. Oilers personality, there you go. There Corporate you go. whore. Corporate whore. Um, Corporate whore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to flip that around. Uh-oh. Uh, okay, oh. that would be sideways. All right, so I'm posting it up on the... Oh, uh, now I can't do sideways. Okay. I should probably should have figured that out. Okay. <laughs> I'm new. I'm yeah, we're all new. Now... Yeah. We're all noobs, so yeah. like, it'll, it'll get better, I hope. I hope it just gets a little bit better, but... Um, hey, if anything, people are just going to laugh at us, and that's awesome. Well, that works. They'll laugh at me all the time. Yeah, it happens to me daily anyway. It's not, yeah. <laughs> not like there'd be much of a change. Yeah. Uh, what were you guys' thoughts on the um, on the on the, the finals, the playoffs in general, I guess? Well, we're not going to talk about the elephant in the room? Well, my My face? PK? PK? Oh. <laughs> no, we might as well stay on topic. No, I just want to be a dick. We'll get there. We'll get uh, there. That could take a while. Finals? Well, you're, you're, yeah, thoughts on the finals. Yeah. yeah. Um, me, myself, I didn't enjoy it. It was very predictable, boring. Hockey. I found you could watch mm-hmm. the last 10 minutes of every game pretty much and you'd, you'd get all the action there. Well, they were all. They were all. Is it was it because they were just too close, or? I was. It, you could say it was close. It was just. Uh, I don't know. There's just not enough offense for my liking. I know I'm not alone in that, but it's kind of like the easy way out. But. What What amazes me uh, with the playoffs this year is that the West. And I'm going to show my bias here. The West is so much uh, better than the Eastern Conference in terms of the quality of the teams you have five or six different teams that could come out of the West any season and they could win and you could make a case for them. And then you go over to the Eastern Conference and it's like the Penguins were really red hot over the last part of the season and the Capitals were great all year. And then you get to the finals and you think that it would be a war. You'd think it'd be really close. The Penguins were hot, uh, you know, over that last quarter of the season, but they don't have the defense, you'd think, to... uh, and the size to handle a team like San Jose and San Jose, the even the games, even the games San Jose won, they, they should have won. It was, it was not even a, it was completely one-sided uh, series. So yeah, I, I sort of agree with you there in terms of the suckage of it. Uh, the overall playoffs weren't bad. Um, uh, the the only problem I had with the final, like I said, was it was just too one-sided. The Sharks didn't. Uh, I don't know what they were doing there, but. The one thing that, that Joe Thornton, keeping the tradition alive. The, the one thing that interested me about I, I was I was rooting for the Sharks. I was hoping the Sharks made the you know won it all. I was hoping Joe Thornton and those guys did win. But the one thing that I found the most sort of something that maybe the NHL has to work on is the actual travel that both of those teams made in the in the playoffs. Because if you look go and you look, the the Sharks actually traveled almost three times as much as far. As yeah, I don't, I don't know how you're going to do anything about that, yeah. though, because the West is just not populated the like the East. Like, yeah. And, just, um, it seems like maybe there should be an extra day or two afforded to the team that maybe gets has that all that extra travel. So, I mean, well, they did day, do when, the... you get, when you get to the final, and, you, and the Sharks took on, I thought, much better teams than the Penguins had to go through. The, the league is confusing, though. Like, you look at a few different things. Like, first of all, 
the fact that the NHL uh, plans their schedule at the same time as the N- NBA playoffs, and then they're wondering why no Americans are watching the, the hockey, yeah. right? Like it's it's really strange planning that you have you have those two leagues running up against each other. Ice quality in San Jose was crap. Uh, players are basically waiting. <laughs> In the water, pucks bouncing everywhere. They need to move up the season a month is what they need to do is start it in September instead of October. It makes no sense to have it. Uh, and yeah, I that think that's part of part September anyway, right? I mean, they have their preseason and stuff going on then anyway, right? So. Right, but yeah, August, nobody's never heard really that, care about I like pre-season. the idea a lot. You know, if you're playing in May, the ice conditions might be a little bit better in terms of the finals instead of June. Just a thought. Well, and you get probably more people interested because it is hot. Or it's hot in June, yeah. especially down in the southern states, right? You know, maybe they use it, use it for air conditioning, but even up here, <laughs> people, they want to go. They kind of yeah. want to be outside in June, right? They don't really yeah. want to be watching hockey. They do. I guess not this year. But I like that idea. I've never, I've never even heard that come up before. The NHL also has to wrap wrap their head around the fact that when there's no Canadian teams in the finals, the ratings go down about sixty or seventy percent. Oh yeah, I can't and, go back. it was it was a it was horrible for Canadian teams. So having that happen too, probably it was hard to get behind anybody. Like I I don't think I think I maybe which um, the again having that I watched maybe three games out of the whole playoffs, like full games. And it was because you just didn't have really an attachment to any one team. Yeah. But that's been 10 years for you, so. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I know I'm in the same boat. Yeah. I figured out, I, I don't know, I watched, I watched a lot more last year and the year before than I did this year. I know that for sure. I think, I think it was the fact that, I, again, you could kind of get behind, you could either be, you know, the heel and, and, you know, you've got a friend that's got, you know, the Canucks or the Canadians or whatever, and you can be the heel and, and, and cheer against the opposite of his team to kind of make it interesting, right? You have someone to kind of, you know, shit talk to when, when it all get, gets down and your team's out, right? But this year there just wasn't any of that because, I, like, I literally don't know any Shark or Penn fans or, Rain, or, like, there's one Ranger fan, but, I mean, they lasted, they didn't last very long, right? So even anybody that went into the second round, Nashville and you know, Dallas are very, very sparse for fans that you can really kind of chirp to, right? I mean, most of the most of the people here that watch hockey are Canadians, right? Yeah, well, that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. I'm in the same boat. I know one Ranger fan as well. I chirped the shit out of him, though. <laughs> I don't think the Rangers are I ever going to pick up. I picked the Rangers to beat, uh, to beat them, so I, it's a little bit weird for me. That was a, a weird situation. I picked, yeah, I think... I picked I think the Rangers are kind of like the Capitals, where they just don't have it. The capital, the Caps, if they were going to do something, I think it was this year, but I don't know. There's just something missing in that in that dressing room that doesn't get them where they need to be in the playoffs. Sad for Ovechkin, though. He might have to I go was... somewhere else if he wants to get a cup. They're they're um uh, they're in a tough spot. I think that they need to. Uh... I think their their window is sort of closing, which is really sad because I would like to see Ovechkin actually win something. Oh, he's <laughs> an easy guy to cheer for, right? He's also he, lots of people hate him, I guess, but yeah, he's to get behind a guy like Ovechkin's pretty easy. You'd like to see him win. But how do you feel if you're San Jose? You got you got Marlowe and you got Thornton and you got those guys, and they're all dinosaurs. They're starting to get older, oh. and uh, you know. <laughs> This is about as close as, as, as he's ever going to get, Thornton's ever going to get to getting his cup. Well, yeah. They, can... They've maybe got a year. They've maybe got next year. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. They they didn't really – they didn't have it as tough as normal years, I don't think, this year. I don't think they – I don't think they have much more. I think they got a little bit winded. And their age showed, and their actually lack of Stanley Cup final experience showed this year, I think. I think another yeah. – if. They could have made something happen two or three years ago. I think they would have been a way better situation. But. Well, I think they're deeper. They're they were deeper this year than they have been in any other past years. Like getting getting the right pieces, I think, to complement the guys. Kind of what the Edmonton Oilers sort of need to do. They they were able to go out and get these guys that are more 
complementary players like Ward and uh, Zubris, and they had they had more <laughs> Zubris. I'm not, Zubris I'm not, I'm was a train wreck. Zubris was a train wreck in the final. Holy he's, crap! Uh, he's depth, right? He's he's not you know, obviously not the worst option that you can go with, right? Yeah. I suppose. No, they no, they're definitely a deeper team, but you could see that when you got to the final that they their horses were. They're looking for water a bit. They're a little run down. Yeah. It, it's hard for those depth guys to carry your team when your when your main guys are freaking sucking air like that. Well, they got they got they got a, some a lot of good young players in there like Couture and. Uh, um, Couture really fell out though. There's a bunch he, of bunch of them that are actually quite young still. That was a good reference when I when I said horses and then you brought up Couture. That's funny. <laughs> oh, he <took> <laughs> he kind of. <laughs> You're mean. <laughs> We're gonna get sued. No. A little defamation. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought, I thought, I thought the just the whole um, again, just not having anybody to really cheer for or be the heel against was um, tough. Yeah. For, for me. Yeah, to... I really hope to not go through a. Uh... A Stanley Cup playoff without a Canadian team in it ever again. That was pretty. <laughs> you might, you might this upcoming year. You might uh, again. I, I don't which know. which Canadian team is going to get better enough? You know, to get Montreal, Toronto's not going to be there. Be there Montreal. Vancouver is not going to be there. Well, maybe Montreal, but other than that, I think Winnipeg might be the best one. Their best case scenario, depending on what they can do. They need to add some things. Wheeler's been a beast for them. I mean, that's he's been he's turned turned a lot of heads. I think. I think they're going to be kind of the dark horse that comes out of the West. If they make it, they're eh, they have some good young talent. They have some guys that can drive. It looks like they have goaltending at times. That might be an issue for them. But yeah, yeah either them or maybe Montreal. Yeah, I think Montreal will make it. They'll, they'll have Carey Price back. He'll be 100%. Um, I, I, I have... But I don't think Price is ever 100%. He's Mr. Injury. Yeah. Like the one thing, like that, the eh? one thing you can count on with Carey Price is Carey Price getting hurt. <laughs> don't say that. I have. I'm, I, he's, he's one of my keepers in my keeper league. That's You're killing me here. I'm just I'm just looking at our show list. We, we're, this is actually a good segue. We're... we're uh, we're going to talk goaltending, um, and I noticed from your list you had Mr. Anderson, not the one in Ottawa, but now the one in Toronto on your list. Yeah, what are your well, thoughts on that? Uh, would, I, well, I mean, it's, it's a great move by Toronto. I, as much as I hate the Leafs, I, 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 it's, it's <laughs> a great move. I, I mean, like they paid nothing for him. Right? Bernier was garbage. Let's let's just be clear on that. Yeah. That Bernier was oh, yeah. dumpster fire, and, uh, and between Bernier and one two right. Is a spent expensive backup goalie in Toronto, but yeah, I mean they've got the money. They don't really care much about the cash. Uh, but the, I mean, I, I, getting Anderson, I think Anderson was a better goalie than Gibson was, in my my personal opinion. Why well, Anaheim sort of when, brought uh, Gibson up when they did this year boggled my brain too, because I was I was I questioned that. I was like, why are they doing that? Because it's not Anderson wasn't losing them games. If anything, he was keeping them in the games because they were just getting hammered early in the year. They weren't skating. They looked slow. They looked old. And then that's got that's got to be a money thing for Mannheim, right? Because they what they get back a couple of draft picks. Yeah. Well, yeah. they're yeah. they're a, they're a, an internal cap team, from what I know. Yeah. They, so they, that's why there's. Because that's giving on. that's giving Anderson away. Well, but they, I don't think they would have had to have paid him all that much either, though. That's the that's the that's the really the hard part. Because again, the, the goalie market is so. Saturated with goaltenders, that yeah. there's well, there's only a few places that need goaltenders, right? I mean, Calgary. Yeah, they, they must really believe in him. What's that? They must really believe in him. That's that's all I can think of. In Gibson, well, because yeah. he's not he's not that proven either. Really, he's not that that's proven a big of a Exactly, that's what I'm. That's a that's a gamble. You look five years down the road, you could have a guy that's backing up, playing ten games a year. That yeah. might be a pile. It's a big bio. 
but I mean it's I don't see Anderson falling off that much if anything I think he's 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 sort of a, he's a stronger goalie the busier he is I found or I found Gibson well, as an, really good when he's not so busy as, as an experienced Oilers fan um, I think I think what everybody in Toronto needs to keep in mind is that uh, and and I said this to somebody the other day and they looked at me cross-eyed as I said the the Leafs actually overachieved last season which is funny because they finished last, but the point is, is that they were a pretty good last instead of being a terrible last, which is what they should have been. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Leafs take a step back. You're going to have your first line being who Marner and, and, and yeah. Austin Matthews, a bunch of kids. And there's nothing wrong with that because it's the process, right? They're, re they're rebuilding and that's the way you have to go about the rebuild. But... Toronto is not going to be a good team, and, and the fans need to keep this in mind, and Anderson's going to get hammered in his net, yeah. and and people need to keep in mind, like, one of the things that's been so painful as an Oilers fan to watch is that there have been several times along the way in the last 10 years where the team was borderline good, and then they'd start losing some games, and you could see the mood of the players and the psychology of the team just go and just fall apart. And and then the players start believing it. You have a player like a like a Neil Yakupov who suddenly can't hit the net, or is Justin Schultz who stops trying to do anything defensively, <laughs> and and the team just starts losing and losing and losing, and the players then stop caring, and and that's the one thing that the Leafs that have to really uh, and the Leafs fan base really needs to keep in mind is that uh, they're not going to have a good team. They have to find some sort of way to stay optimistic about what they're doing because the others were terrible at this. Uh, and there's reasons for it. When you keep firing the coaches and you intentionally bring in a coach, you know all the players are going to hate. Well, yeah, the the Clock team's going to lose. A problem there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and uh, so you know, Anderson, I, I hope he doesn't take it to heart what's going to happen to him this season because the Leafs are going to be a 30th place team again. Uh, well, no I question. Hope they do that for another nine years. Get a bitch about us being the the worst team. <laughs> well, the others, the others are going to get better, but it's it's mostly going to get better here. Like the lack of trades already, has, and all the other teams are, seem to be doing stuff except for us. Um, the lack of trades really sort of indicate that the others are trapped. They can't acquire the type of player they want to acquire in a trade, and uh, they're going to have to draft it and develop it out. And it's just going to take time. And and. To be honest with you, the biggest problem the others have is themselves. When you draft 13 left-shot defensemen and one right-shot defenseman and then wonder why you can't get any good right-shot defensemen, somebody in the management office is dropping the ball. Your scouts are dropping the ball. You're, you know, the Seth Jones trade, and I saw that was on your list too to talk a little bit about defensemen. Seth Jones, uh, you know, uh, they got beat to the punch by Nashville. There should have been some sort of way that the others could have outbid outbid um, uh, Columbus, or outbid for uh, for Seth Jones with Nashville. I think, um, the, I think the tough part about that was I think I think Nashville was sort of stuck on getting Johansson. Yeah, they really wanted Johansson, yeah. I think that might be it, because they did talk to us. And yeah, but, what, but uh, okay, if you're in the Oilers, though, what's, would, the, would, would they be more interested in, let's say, dry settle? Like, I'm just saying theoretically here, if we really wanted to get Seth Jones, could we have said, okay, well, we have... Because when that trade happened, yeah, Dreisaitl's got that one hot streak. Johansson had a pretty good... Uh, he had a pretty good uh, campaign. I, I they, think the ceiling is higher. The ceiling is higher on Dreisaitl, and aside from that, there were rumors that they were moving Johansson out of Columbus because of his attitude. Uh, there, there were all sort of questions it really about what kind of. I heard it was just his play. He wasn't, he wasn't committing to playing the two-way game that everyone's so focused on, and he, he, he's shown that even sometimes in Nashville where he gets a little bit lazy on the back check or. But, the, but that's attitude, right? That's that's attitude of a player. If you're going to go in and play hard every game, or if you're going to. So when when things don't go your way, you sometimes hang your head for that extra second or two, and then you you know it's, it's a struggle to get back. But he showed in the playoffs that he's a he's a pretty darn good player. Really, I didn't see much out of him myself personally. 
maybe I didn't watch him all that much, but when I, 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 a while to wake up. I thought he played quite well. Him and James Neal, I thought, uh, were the were the were the two sort of. See, and I and I thought Columbus kicked the crap out of Nashville with that trade. I think Seth Jones is going to be a top pairing guy, and uh, and and you don't just like it's you don't just get those players. They don't just fall from the sky like. Right shot top pairing defenseman is just about the hardest thing you can find in the NHL in terms that, of assets. The second hardest thing to find, though, is is probably your centerman, though, right? So I mean, well, it's I would say that it was, it was more more That's fair Peter than Shirelli. it was one sided. I think there, but, there's something to be said for it's all about your need and what you actually have in your system, right? Well, yeah, and that's like the thing. Columbus right now is now what are they in the market for? <laughs> you know, center iceman that can, you know, a top pairing center iceman. So they kind of traded from. They're capped out though. That's, well, that's going yeah, to the, that's that's the They're going to they're be dumping some guys, and I think Edmonton might be in a, a good situation to actually give them a call. Maybe maybe you could pick up a guy like a Savard and and maybe a guy like Hartnell. I mean, I, I I would I would I would gladly bring Hartnell in. I mean, he's he's a character guy. He's well, a, the, the rumor going around with Hartnell is that they're they're trying to dump his contract mostly for his age, right? Yeah. But Hartnell's yeah. got a no move no, no move clause and he'll want to go to a team that's half decent and and I think that's the problem. It would be a pretty hard sell and does he not play the left wing, which he, the he others does. don't need any of that. He does. Right. But yeah, I, he is. Um, if I'm not mistaken, him and him and uh, Giroud do train in Edmonton, though I do believe. Let me just bring up the. He's a left wing. You know but he's oh, going to be gotta a have this thing. kind of left wing guy anyway, right? He's going to be a, a lot, lot of money. It's yeah, a lot of money to pay for your third line. What's the what's what's the what's the length? What's the term? Well, he's got three years left at four point seven five million, and he's left shot left wing. Yeah. So what's he's exactly with the four seven five. Four seven five. So he's exactly with the yeah. It's exactly what the Oilers don't need. Let's just put it to you that way. Unfortunately, I, I like Hart. I like Hartnell, so I see it. Unfortunately, it's. I, I like Hartnell, but it's it's not really about Hartnell. It's about getting maybe some. No. It was more about focusing yeah. on Savard and taking Hartnell as that cap dump. Yeah. What is uh, what is Savard though in terms of quality? What is he a three four? What is, what's a Savard? His his contract is reasonable four point two five and he's got five years left. But he's a he's, he's twenty five. He's young. He's young. His ceilings there. Twenty five. Yeah. I haven't seen the player all that much. I don't know much about Savard. Yeah, he's not, he's not a bad player. Yeah. He's a 3-4. He's, he's like, considering the Oilers' options for defense, he's an improvement. Believe me, it's I, I wouldn't be well, upset at all if they acquired him, but how do you evaluate, you know, what my, value to put on him? My garbage can might be an improvement on some of the D that we have. <laughs> no, 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 Justin Schultz is no longer there, so that can't be true. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Mark yeah. Fain looked pretty pile on a lot of times. I, I'll, tell you, all I, I'll tell you when they first announced that they they made that deal for Mark Fain, I hated it right from the beginning. Yeah, I, I hated I, that. I said, I said the exact same thing the second that they said. I said, "Why? He's not even going to be on this team in two years." But yeah, I had no idea. Coming up through the team. system, I said, "Why would they give him that kind of term and that kind of money when he's probably not even going to be playing in two years?" But that that's what this team was all about, and that's why I like what you were saying uh, about them not just going out and making trades like they used to. So they used to go out and inquire these guys that were just, uh, you know what, they could help us and they might boot us around for a bit and we'll give them some money. And then they end up being handcuffed by these guys. Like, fame's untradeable. He came out of New Jersey. He wasn't anything to talk about. There wasn't much hype around him. I don't know how he got. I, I, I think I think I think there is a trade out there for Mark Fain. I, I actually yeah. think there is one, uh, but uh, Oiler fans would have to swallow pretty hard on this because I think the trade that's out there is Mark Fain for Pavel Datsuk's seven point five million dollar cap hit. And the reason why you'd want to do that trade if you're the Oilers is two reasons. First of all, you don't actually pay 
that Suk any money. It's just on the books as a 7.5 cap hit. Fain has two years left on his contract for approximately the same total money. So money. It's, it's like three... Three six right. So where the Oilers are going to get into a cap crunch is not this season, but next season. And getting Fane off the books for next season is actually what you'd want to do to alleviate cap, you know, cap space. Which makes um, sense for Datsuk, right? Well, Datsuk Dat doesn't Dat give a shit. Right? Yeah. Datsuk's on his last year, right? So it would only yeah. be this year. The, the the rumor is is that Detroit's really in on the Stamkos uh, thing. Yeah, that, well, if, the Stamkos. If, I honestly think if Detroit Stam if Detroit gets rid of that Datsu contract some way somehow that Stamkos will end up in Detroit. Right, and as and this is where they help each other out is that you could have the Oilers theoretically uh, not only take um, not only take Datsu's contract but actually retain some of Fane's if Detroit puts in a prospect that's worth it. Or a player that's worth it, and the Oilers would swallow hard this year. Like I said, it would handcuff the cap quite a bit in Edmonton this year. But Which then it's gone. gone. As we all probably know, we don't. I don't think they're pushing for the playoffs at this point in time, anyway. No, no, I don't think the point of the the 2016-2017 season is to make the playoffs. I think the point is that uh, you they want have some. You everybody to over, overtly know that, though, if you're if you're the Oilers brass. Like I'm, I'm just gonna play devil's advocate here. Do you want to say we're gonna take this contract for minimal return, and we're basically gonna say, thanks for buying tickets. We'll see you next year. Well, that's the, what you're. It, I mean, well, no, but the truth is, no, but the Oilers fans right? aren't stupid. First of all, Oilers fans aren't stupid. Like you run into it, you go into let's say an Oilers fan page, and there's a couple thousand people who are there. There's going to be idiots, and of course the idiots post comments because that's what idiots do. They talk. Guilty they like talking, right? <laughs> but the fact is, the majority of the Oilers fan base really smart and knowledgeable. You go on to the Oilers website right now, and they had a poll up. What should the Oilers do with that number four pick? And they had options. Should we trade it for immediate help? Should we trade down? Whatever. Half of the people who responded to that said keep the pick and use it on the best player available. It just so happens that if you do your research, you look at the history of drafts, trading down almost never works. You're almost always better to take the player, the best player you can with your pick. Uh, because there's a better chance that's going to be an actual NHL player. And and whether you keep, you know, in this case, Mass, you could choke or you, you draft them and then later trade them because you have too many left wings, you're still getting the best asset, and that's going to get you the best players you need when it comes time to. Um, there's no rush to get Kachuk playing for them next season, especially if they can go out and sign Lucic, which sounds likely. That would be um, awesome. I would so buy a yeah. Lucic jersey straight out the get. Yeah, it's, it's, it it's sounds... There. He's, he I, is exactly I, I what the team needs. He's a, he is an absolute beauty. He's one of those guys that you hate when he's on anybody else's team but your own. Yeah, Lu well, Lucic that's is kind of the same. We're getting that with we had we picked up Cassian who had that same MO, right? Yeah, I love but it. He didn't have the upside of Lucic, so I, I understand why they want him. Lucic, no, Lucic, Lucic is what Pouliot should be, right? Like Pouliot's kind of like a failed failed version of Lucic, and that's the thing is, Pouliot with four million on his contract, the others will be able to move him. They won't get a lot back in return, but they will be able to move him. You just give yep. his money to Lucic, throw a couple million on top, everybody's happy. It's it's that's not an impossible trade, and and you can easily play Patrick Maroon on your third line. You can stick Lucic with, uh, with, with McDavid, uh, and basically he kills anybody who touches McDavid. That's part of his job, and and you still have Taylor Hall there. You're going to be very solid on your left wing. You can come into next, you know, next season, not this upcoming one, and you can take your math. You could chuck pick and say, okay, we need need to get a right wing now for our top six, and we can move the asset then, you know, at that point. Or you could keep Nuge and Hod Nuge and um, and play Drysaddle on your right side, right? I think Drysaddle and Hall are going to be together for a long time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that's a pairing that they just do not break up. There's just no way. I like Drysaddle. I don't know if he's 100% going to pan out. I know he's. I don't think he's going to be as good as everybody else thinks he's going to be. 100% is what a 
This is just like everybody's very sold on this kid. I think he's going to be a, a, an extremely dynamic player. I, th- I mean, you look at what he did last year, that's impressive for a, a kid that age. Like, really, think about that. And Shirelli he, loves him. Shirelli loves him. He's going to get bigger, stronger, yeah. faster, yeah. better. He's, he's, there's nothing but good things that I've seen from him anyway. Oh, I like what I see from him. What I didn't like is he, but Taylor Hall did the same thing. When it, when it came down to it, they kind of folded a little bit in the last half of the season. That's a come to expect, but the thing is, is it was basically his rookie year. So you'd like him to put up a better showing at the end. So that gives me a little pause. I, it don't, I'm not saying that I, the player isn't there. I think that's just, just, I think that's just due to his age. That's the first grind of the NHL he was in, right? I mean, that's, yeah, that's, I true. that's basically what it is. I think that all of that's going to kind of wash itself out with time, right, and experience and being able to get out there and actually put up the, you know, go through a couple of those seasons where he's, get, he's got his body and feet, uh, peak physical condition, I think. I don't think it's a, a situation where he fell off because he's just a bad player. I think it's more of a mental thing for him. I, I think he's physically able to do it. I just think the mental grind yeah. maybe bought to him, like you are saying. And that's, that's happens, right? He's, yeah, he's, I think well, he's, the... the, the the Oilers season that I watched uh, last year was a team that was pretty happy until they realized Connor McDavid was quite injured, and then the whole thing just sagged. Uh, yeah. And um, <laughs> and eventually, you know, they were writing one line for half the season, like Hall and Dreisaitl. Well, eventually they ran out of gas. It's he's he's a kid and he's learning how to play in the NHL. It's like everybody ripping on uh, Darnell Nurse's performance. Well, oh, Nurse is oh, over. Oh. Blah, blah, blah. It's like no, he looks like a kid who's learning how to play in the NHL. Uh, the he, toughest he position in hockey too, right? I that's, I honestly think that that's the toughest position in hockey is, is playing. Yeah, you can't you can't you know people are. I've I've read lots of stuff about people move nurse move nurse. It's like no, just let them play, let them learn how to play. But this is the other situation, right? Is that if your defensemen, your three most important defensemen are Nurse, Clefbaum, and Davidson, you know, one of them has hit puberty. We we know of. Uh, perhaps the huh? other two haven't yet. You know, uh, it's a problem. It's a problem, and you can't. And it makes no sense to go because you have a lot of people. There's somebody on my timeline right now that is convinced that the others should flip picks with Calgary. Um, so we can get Dennis Weidman. And I sit there and go, no, think about this. Think about this. You want to go get, like, if you're if you're going to go find anybody, go find a 22 or a 23-year-old. Find somebody who's going to fit into the timeline of the team. Uh, because bringing in, you know, 30-year-old veterans maybe doesn't make a lot of sense right now. Um, when you Because the others are only going to move. It's like the bottleneck, right, on a, on a, on a jar. Things only move as fast as they can get out of the the, the smallest point, and uh, and the smallest point in Edmonton's the defense. So the team is going to be bad until we have good defense. Well, a, and you're perfect, have to, another perfect segue into the next topic, right? Which is uh, available defensemen, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and the, and, and the, the rough answer. It's like we've the done rough this. Answer for that is, is crazy. Nine. It's literally like we've like we've done this before. We're aged veterans in our first go around here. We just we've been able to lead right in smoothly. This is great. Same yeah, way. We're I, just on I, I don't I don't like the defensive market. I'll tell you. I think the others are are in trouble here. Uh, if they wanted to improve this year, I think they're in trouble because I I think that uh, uh, teams are asking for the moon. Like the yes. Subban discussion today. The Subban discussion today was ridiculous. That's been lighting up the entire internet. It's everywhere. Yeah, and it's My ridiculous. Feed on because Facebook was just loaded with it. It's just. I, I had somebody on my I had somebody on my timeline that was basically saying the Oilers would have to give up Hall plus the number four pick plus a third asset uh, for Subban, and I'm sitting there going, "There's no way the Oilers would give up Hall." Like straight yep. up, straight up for Subban. Yeah, they are. Subban's the, the reason why they're talking about moving Subban. You don't give a guy a nine million per season contract for term. Like what is it, seven eight years that he got term? Something like a seventy eight million dollar contract or whatever. He, he they paid him the big bucks, and then all of a sudden you're considering moving him. Well, why is that? Because there's a problem in the room. That's why that he doesn't get along with the rest of the players. You wouldn't try and move that player if there wasn't a problem. So the fact well, that it's even coming up. They're actively moving them, though. That's the thing. 
There, there's oh, a that's lot of come on. No, and then Montreal puts himself in a in a real no. tough spot too. So if they get rid of PK Subban, then they're then they're on the market for a number one defenseman, which is going to end up costing them no. what. They no, every everybody knows what went on in Montreal this year. There was this. I don't know if you saw the one news conference that uh, Subban was denying that there was a problem in the room, and he went up to Matt, Max uh, Pacioretty and gave him a hug, and Pacioretty looked like he was the most confused person on the planet. And and it's because the guy. There is a problem in the room in Montreal. It, everybody knows it. And Subban's personality rubs people the wrong way. I'm not saying he's not a good defenseman. He's a great defenseman. But if you're going to trade Subban away with that contract hit, that cap hit, yeah, there's got to be a good not reason. Not get full value. Yeah, you can't ask for and as, so, so you're looking at a, maybe a haul for Subban trade straight up, and that's realistic for both teams. But then I, you I have people think... like, well... You're... Go ahead. Oh, no, I just don't think the Oilers will do that. I think they hit. I think maybe Montreal did come back with that offer and Trelly just hit ignore. We're not going to even go down that road for Hall. Well, the rumor, the, rumor, well, the rumor is they asked for dry settle in the fourth. And, Which and, I uh, do. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't no. do it. It's, no offense, uh, I'm not overvaluing anybody. I think P.K. Subban would be an absolute beauty to have. But for the future of this organization, I think the two players that the Oilers should be content with getting rid of are not dry side. Uh, is not Hall. Well, no, it's not about who you're content to move. It's about right now and all you do. If you take their assets as a pool, where is your where is your talent? Where is your asset pool most heavy? And it's at the forward position, young guy. And right now, it's that's not a huge ask to move a fourth for it, which is essentially a prospect. Well, the fourth is okay. I'm okay with the fourth. Which is it's, for it's a dry side. It's it's dry. I mean, his cap hits hot heavy, but dry side. When does he get signed up again? I think it's. Uh, he's got another next year, summer. years, isn't he? He's got he's got uh, I believe just one year, one? one year left. One year left. I believe it's one. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's fun because he played pro in his first. If you remember. Right, he did. Yeah, he was up for the first for more than nine years. Yeah, so he's he's an RFA next uh, next summer. Right. And you're looking yeah, at probably six money. six million bucks, like basically the Jordan, you nah, know, the he'll Everly bridge. And, he'll bridge. He'll, depending on what he does this year, I think yeah. he'll bridge. I don't think he'll bridge. I think he, I think they'll on a long term. Really? Yeah, you'll have to because he's going up. That bridge deal makes it so he resigns that year or two after for mega bucks. If you could sign him for six mil, I think that would work. But yeah. I mean, look at that contractually. I think have... he, I think he bridges. I, I don't think. But if you're looking at just look at the uh, the cap space here. Okay, so you have Pouliot, which I think is dispensable. That's four million. Korpakowski, two point five. Yakupov, two point five. Hendricks, you could make the debate. He's movable. 1.85, Latestu, who should be gone, 1.8. Uh, like, you can mo remove already off of this team's current tap over, over 10 million of cap spending, just like that, if you wanted to. Yeah, but you also have to replace with, with uh, like, legit NHL players for most of that in the meantime, right? The thing I like about the Subban deal is you got 9 million over, I think it's six or seven years he has left. And then that's a constant, whereas you draft, who are they going to draft at four, Dubois or Kachuk? It doesn't really matter. Those guys, once they come off ELC in three years, and then you have Dreisaitl as well, you're probably looking at a combined total of 13 to 14 mil. So really you got yeah. to, and you're filling, a, you're filling a huge hole by bringing in a number one. If the, if the Canadian dollar miraculously uh, comes back, oh. <laughs> the league will have uh, revenues again. What do you guys oh, think? Yeah, the cap's going up. I think it's that good. there's a few guys that the Oilers can target and could move guys not as important to the chemistry of the team. Like I said, I, I have a, I have, I would be really leery of moving uh, Drysidle. I'm a little bit leery on the moving Yakupov as well because I think he's going to turn into a really good player. But I'm, I'm very much okay with the moving. Um, uh, Eberle, and I know some people are going to take this the wrong way because I've ranted about this before. I just think that 
they have a real big opportunity right now where they can actually move a guy like Jordan Eberle and bring somebody in who has more intangibles to what this team needs and uh, wants to build around going forward. A guy like Opozo or Lucic or or even inquiring about an Andrew Shaw, David Backus, any of those four type of guys you could give Eberle money and move him but, up and be a better team, I think, in the future. The thing about yeah, I'm not a fan. is you got to replace that right shot. And you also have to replace 25 consistent goals a year. I mean, and if you're moving Everly and you're not getting a defenseman back, well, that's that's what I mean. I I would move Everly for a defenseman. I don't think yeah, I, I don't think I for would. a second that Hamannick is off the market. I think that that was a that was a stone cold poker play uh, from the the uh, uh, from the Islanders so? on that. I think that they came out and they just asked them to, to kind of revoke it so they can try and get more value out of it. I don't think for a second that Barry's off the market either. So I think I think there's there's I think there's a problem there with uh, I think that maybe Barry doesn't like he's he might not he might have room issues as well because it just doesn't seem right why they would be dumping a guy like that in in Colorado when they need defensemen. As I well. heard he doesn't him and Patrick Waugh don't get along. Yeah, which and that could be the case. Not under, but not again, I don't I don't think for one second that either of those two guys are completely off the market, and I think that a guy like Everle. And maybe a second asset, you know, a pick or whatever the situation could be, could end up landing us a, a Hamannick. And then the the problem the problem with Colorado and and the Islanders though is both of them want defensemen back. They don't want forwards, and that's and yeah. that's the problem in making well, it straight. But they've been saying too that they they need to find a winger that'll play with uh, Tavares, right? Well, now they do because of Pozo's on, but you know, like they they have a hole now, but. Well, they're, they're going to have a hole regardless. I don't think, I, I, and that's the thing. The thinking way is, is that they're, they're, they've got a situation where uh, Hamannick wants to leave, and he's got a select few places that he wants to go to, and they're looking to get the same player back in return. The, the teams don't usually gift teams favors like that. You know what I mean? So even if the Oilers were to, you know, it's like, okay, hey, sure, you're in a situation where What's that? I said Glenn Sather gifted uh, the Oilers Talbot, remember, last year? He said he was doing yeah. it to be nice. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a different situation. <laughs> that was very nice of that man, too. Yeah. Well, Chalk that up yeah. to a once-in-a-decade type of move, and I don't think that happens yeah. too, too often. I mean, there's some goodwill to be made in it, but I'm, a, I'm in agreement with you, Mike. I don't think – there's no way you're going to – you can ask full value, but what you found out, Snow found out, is – you can't get value full value back when you're, your and leverage I, is gone. The guy I think the them getting right? uh, getting Eberle and a pick or and a prospect is a pretty darn good deal for the Islanders at this point moving forward. And if it wasn't it, if it wasn't for the fact that the Oilers have nobody to play on the right side, no right well, shot people. Can just go get I can live with it. Uh, uh, I know Bacchus is center right wing. Um, he would be an absolute beauty to have have on that side. And again, I would give yeah, I would give Yakupov that spot on the top line where Everly is. Yeah, Yak Yakupov's not going to be back. Uh, I yeah. I think I think that uh, Shirelli is sort of. That's unfortunate. I think he's of the opinion that they want to clean out the room in terms of attitudes. And and it's terrible. What's terrible about it is Yakupov is going to go someplace like Montreal. He'll end up like there somehow. And then he's going to turn into a 35, 40 goal scorer, and everybody's going to go, well, Edmonton just kills prospects, right? And and in a way, in a way, the organization has it coming. They under Rolf Kruger, Yakupov looked like the hockey player, and then they intentionally brought in a coach that everybody hated, and all of a sudden Yakupov's on the fourth line, and everybody's wondering why he's not scoring. Well, you don't take a player who's offensively gifted and stick him on the fourth line and ruin his confidence. <laughs> like Yakupov, Yakupov needs to go someplace else just for Yakupov's sake. I don't think it's ever going to work out because McClellan wasn't exactly warm and fuzzy with me either this season. Well, it, well he, gave him, he gave him rope, but the thing is that they wanted him to turn around really quick, right? And he... A guy like that with that much offensive pedigree that got treated like a dog, you can't yeah. just be like, here you go, here's here's five games, and every time you fuck up, 
you're going back to the fourth line. Like, there's not really anything there for a guy like Jack. The first I, f bomb. I don't know how long we're into this thing, but the first f bomb. That that's that's got. To, I I'd never expected that. I thought that would have gone out out the window early. It adds, one, but... it adds seasoning. <laughs> seasoning. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> no, that's my. That's the way I look at it with Yak. Is I'm the same with Richard. Like I know he's going to be a good hockey player. It's just like with Schultz. It's you didn't. The hockey player didn't go away. Like this hockey sense. It's his confidence, and if you can't, you got to move away from him for both parties' sake, right? For Yak's sake and for our sake. I don't. You know. I, I don't think Justin Schultz is 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 a very good hockey player. No offense, but I mean, I don't think. No, I, I don't think he is either. He's he's uh, defensively. I don't think uh, I would be surprised yeah. if he gets re-signed next year. Um, I don't. See no, they said they said he's not. They're not going to call oh, for him. Not so. him for sure, but I'd be surprised if any team takes a waiver on him. I just don't see. And he, even if they do, I think he sits in the minors anyway. I don't think he plays a, a regular. Shape. He might get a minor deal. I, I think he's going to get a shot next year. It'd be he, silly he might for get a team. shot, but I don't. I don't think he sticks. I don't think he sticks on any NHL clubs. Well, how many times? What, what, is, what is what is Anaheim? Time? What does Anaheim need on the right side? Not Justin Schultz. <laughs> Yeah, come on. Oh, Let him go yeah. back to Anaheim. Justin Schultz. Maybe Toronto. With, with, Toronto with Carlisle with... there now? Yeah. Well, the fans... Can you imagine Carlisle? Well, I, I could see him going to Toronto and, and trying to get that chemistry back with Gardner or whoever it was that he played with. Yeah, you know Gardner. what? That might be the team. It's going to be a younger team, right? It's but I don't see up. him. I don't see him sticking. He's just... I don't think he's got the... I don't think he's got the... Uh, what it takes to be perception is a perception is a really funny thing though um, I don't know if you remember during the season uh, lots of discussion about Martin Moranson in Toronto and how uh, Toronto <laughs> the the Toronto uh, media said what a great player that they acquired and how uh, the Oilers are stupid for giving up on him yeah. well the fact is that the stats people will tell you that Moranson is a tire you know he's a tire yard fire he's a terrible defenseman totally. and uh, Oh yeah, his he's not a good defenseman. It's all perception though. Like what's what's you know what's the attitude towards the player? I I I feel sorry for anybody coming into Edmonton this year. Like okay, yeah, you go trade for a Tyson Berry or a Hamonic or any combination of guys. I have certain people that I think that they could actually acquire easier than others. But that player is going to have pressure on them because this fan base is sick of losing. The the warm and fuzzy feeling about the new arena, that they, it's going to wear off in about a month, and then fans are going to be, this team should be winning. And that's yeah. part of the same reason I don't want them to stick the C on Connor McDavid yet because he's a 19-year-old kid that you're going to say, okay, carry this team now. It's been terrible for 10 years. Here you go. I still yeah. think that uh, I still think we're going to be a better team than we were last year. I think McDavid oh, yeah. is even factor alone, and I think if they're if they're even close <laughs> to making the playoffs, the fans are going to be able to take a step back and be a little bit sort of okay with it. I mean, all the I team remember having this too. conversation this same time last year and having these same talking points. We, yeah. There's no way we can be this bad next year, and as long as we're sniffing the playoffs. And I'm not saying that as saying we're going to make the playoffs, but they do need to make. And it's not even just it's the way you lose hockey games too. The way they lost hockey games this year, the way they just seemed indifferent to losing, that's got to change. That's what well, they don't even have to make. They don't even have to make moves. They just need to stay healthy, and they'd be a better team. Because that was one of the big things that railroaded them last season, right? Like a healthy McDavid, who would have played all 82 games, would have put in 90 points. Yep. You know, he would have he would have been among the top two or three or four play, you know scores in the league, and that's just McDavid. And Yakupov was going when McDavid was healthy, you know. Um, yeah, and then he gets yeah. Have they fired yeah, the train? Have they fired the trainers yet? Uh, well, Sparky's been gone for a while, so they yeah. haven't done that. What was that three years ago? They fired the entire equipment staff. Everybody. Yeah, I thought that trainers. was the problem. Yeah. yeah, that was the funniest thing I've ever heard. Uh, what? What's our? We need to make a segue. 
Yeah, <laughs> we're all searching for no, early. No, oh no! But the if we're talking defensemen, <laughs> if, we're, if we're talking defensemen, because we we haven't really touched on this, the team that I think the Oilers should be targeting, and I've been saying this for a while now, is the Minnesota Wild, uh, because they are in really really bad cap trouble. Uh, they have Tyler Spurgeon, who's got a five million plus per season contract. Spurgeon, uh, he's right shot as well. I know. You know, he's from the Edmonton area. He's right shot. He's an offensive defenseman. Can quarterback the power play. He's a completely decent player. And uh, and the others could fit him under the cap. The Wild need to dump that contract. Or if you don't want to Spurgeon, they have Matt Dumbra, who's an RFA they have to sign. They have basically 15 players signed right now, and they're only a few million below the cap you know, the cap ceiling. Like They, they have some money issues. And uh, that's a team the Oilers should be talking to about a defenseman. And uh, and there's been lots of talk about Brodine. Nah, get a right shot defenseman. Like seriously, you can't just keep getting left. You know, you can't just keep getting left shot defensemen. It doesn't work. They, they, no, I would, I would think any of those three. I think any of those three are are a, are a big upgrade. I mean, I think Dumba's young. Dumba's really young, and he's he's. He's right there. He's going to be a really good defenseman, too, as, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. He, he fits into the Oilers' timeline, and that's one thing I like about the idea. Like, he's in RFA this summer, but uh, it would be a bridge deal for him, maybe $2 million a season, two and a half. I don't know. But, um, and he's developing. You know, he, I don't know if he's going to make them a better team immediately. Well, no, that's the thing is that's what they're lacking. Secura, Sekura came in as supposedly the alpha defenseman, right? I don't think he has that mentality where he can lead that back end. I think he was Good just defense at the time. I don't think he was, you know, league known as a number one. He was just the best mid, best defenseman that year. That yeah. Was, I think, right? And we can go out and we can get a Dunbar or a Spurgeon, but uh, you're still going to need to bring in somebody that's going to teach these kids how to play hockey at a National Hockey League level. What's your what's your thought what's your thought on Shattenkirk? What would you give up for him with him being in the last year of his deal? Well, Steve, I'd have to. It's it's tough too because what does St. Louis want? They don't want any salary back. That's where you're looking yeah, you, for a number four, and maybe a nail, something like that. But that's, I don't, that's a big risk too because I mean you get you, that's a lot to give up for a last for one year of Shattenkirk. Yeah. And then yeah, you got, well, and then you up. also have, well, or you could do, I think you'd have to get a number four in there because they already turned down number nine, I think. I, if I don't, if I recall, they turned Who's down number nine. drafting at nine? Uh, shit, who was that? Uh oh. But I know that they turned down an offer. This is why I keep all the charts up usually. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah, I heard the offer too. I wasn't. I, I didn't hear what it was. Yeah, I can't remember what it was either. I heard that, but I don't. I don't know if there's any truth to that either. Because again, I think, I think if they're going to get a pick for Shattenkirk anywhere within the top ten, I think they take it. I, I think they. Well, take that's a pretty. Anyway. How can you make that up though? Because yeah, that's Montreal. Uh, maybe that's. Maybe it was Buffalo. That maybe it was eight. I can't Buffalo's remember. drafting at eight. Yeah. I can't. It was it was a, it was a top ten pick, but they turned it down. Is it an auto wide nine? Of is course, that? when you want something to, of, is it Ottawa that's nine? I'm waiting for something to load here. Oh, Montreal's at nine, but I don't think that was Montreal. Montreal's at nine. Okay. I don't think it was. I don't recall it, them making that offer, but. So. Yeah, I remember I read something. I can't remember who it was either, but. Um... But, I mean, for that to float in a team not to deny it, then, like, you can't just float that offer specifically. You could say somebody offered us a top ten draft pick, but you can't say the number nine spot got offered. And yeah. the team would be yeah. like, no, we didn't offer you that. <laughs> you can't I don't see Montreal that. and Shattenkirk being a fit. I, I, I thought it, it might have been, been Arizona. That's but that's a... But Arizona, did they actually before. need defense? That was, I heard that that was before they they did their you know their big deal there. But yeah, I, I I thought that I heard something along those lines there too. Okay, I'll throw I another know. concept then to uh, just to just to to bridge this. Um, because there's lots of talk about the Oilers, uh, like the fact that Kachuk's a left shot 
left winger. Um, the Oilers possibly trading down. Arizona has been one of the teams that have been mentioned, and Arizona has two picks in the first round. So I'm guessing that would be the trade. Is you'd have the Oilers giving the fourth overall to Arizona for let's say seven and twenty. Uh, thoughts? What do you think? I wouldn't do that deal just because seven and twenty twenty doesn't do once you get out of the top ten. Like you're not really four is much more valuable in my eyes in every situation than seven and twenty. Seven's okay. But you're still not getting a, a player that's guaranteed going to play. And well, who are you going to? Okay, so Kachuk is going to go probably fourth, unless I would, if, if you're going to drop to seven, you take Chitrin, I think. No, no, or, Chitrin or the, highest, or the highest ranking defenseman at that point. You'll, you'll love the others like Sergachev, and that's the defenseman that they like actually the most. Yes, yeah, that, that would uh, be. He's, even though he's left shot, he's right pairing. Yeah. Uh, which is part of the reason they'd be interested. And he's a big body. He hits. He uh, skates. I've got a good shot from the point. He could power play, uh, quarterback and power play. If you're going to drop um, then that's the guy you take. Yeah. Yeah. No, it would definitely be a Sergachev thing with the seventh pick, but the 20th pick, who knows, right? The others well, really like center Logan Brown as well. They're really, really high on this guy. I'm not quite sure. Exactly why, but they're very. I have heard that he's supposed he might be the steal of the draft, is what they were saying. Logan Brown, I've heard. He's well, he's the monster. He's absolutely huge, right? And and I think that's part of it is like that? six six and some ridiculous weight already. Like yeah. he's like he's gonna be a. He, but that's he's, he's gonna be enormous. Like what do you do with him? But. Um, <laughs> Well, that's that kid out of St. Louis that probably uh, what was that defenseman that came on this year? He's from here, I think. Went and played up in Alaska. But that's okay. probably what spurred that on because he was a he was a diamond in the rough, and everybody was asking why we didn't find him. That's probably what's spurring yeah. on this talk, right? He's so big. This is what he's gonna look like. Kind of I don't stuff. necessarily know if is bigger better, uh, and I'm talking hockey here, guys. So oh, I can pervert oh, it. Oh. <laughs> um, that just turned really sour really quick. All right. <laughs> well, no, but but okay, but there's you, okay. Clayton Keller, right? You you look in the top ten. There's Keller, who uh, his comparable is a Patrick Kane, Marner sort of uh, center, a five nine uh, short guy. He's in the top ten, and then you have Brown, which. You know, it's six six, and uh, I, I remember it kind of reminds me a bit of a certain draft that the Oilers went into, where they had three first round picks, and uh, they went and took a defenseman by the name of Alex Plant, and Woo! they were showing Alex Plant. They were showing they were showing Plant. They were showing Plant. Uh, you know how the, after the draft they always show like video clips of him, and the video clips they showed of him was him taking two steps and falling over, and and. There were several clips of him falling over uh, that they showed. They drafted him. That's and exactly what they were looking for. They were looking for the two-step fall. Well, but this is the thing, right? What's the good of having a six-six player if you can't skate and play the game? From right? what I've heard, though, he can skate. I've heard he's got. He's really quick. He's. Well, let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope he is. That's. I've because heard that he's really quite fast for for being a, that big of a, a, a guy. There's another thing that I think is possible that's going to happen, and a lot of people are, would really not like to hear this, but uh, I, I think that uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins is in play, and if the Oilers can't make a deal uh, to bring in uh, a now defenseman, they might have to trade and draft and develop. He and uh, you never know to, who's going to be available. He has to be in play. I mean, at, for the first time in a long time, we've got center depth. And yes, they're going into this draft where they could literally pick up a guy who's got center left eligibility in Dubois, so it gives them a little bit more of an advantage that way too, right? So I mean, yeah. they, they, and that's what I said earlier is they've, they've got so many options right now where they can and should and be making moves if they actually wanted to improve. They they're in an op they've got a situation where they can. I mean, if they they go and yeah. pick up a guy like a Lucic or a Bacchus or a you know whoever else is out there. Um, they can they can fill those needs that they need to kind of fill all in one sort of failed swoop. I mean, and there's guys out there that are available, Shattenkirk, Barry, um, 
uh, Hamannick, all of those guys are going to be improvements. And if you if if you you've got an off season where you can kind of make yeah yeah you're going to have to make a couple of really tough decisions. It's gonna it's going to be one of Nuge or Everlay or Hall or or, or Drysaddle or whatever the situation is. But you've got to sort of make that um, sacrifice and and get on it because I mean this is a an off season where probably for the first time in a long time, they can actually acquire two or three pieces that will really help this team out in the future. Is is Dougie Hamilton from Calgary possible? It uh, depends on how Calgary values him. Obviously, Giordano's not going anywhere, but are they set on a Giordano-Hamilton um, yeah, the the for they the rest of their, their time? I don't know if they're going to move him. It would be kind or, of weird if. They or did. is Calgary disappointed with the season that they had? That they are just like, okay, well, I mean, look, let's just, you know, it was a mistake. We're paying them too much. Let's just move on. I mean, if that's the case, yeah, I think that that might be something that's very well. Their their interest is in moving up the draft. Correct me if I'm wrong. That they they yeah. want Kachuk. Yeah. And they hmm. but they also want to keep their pick. They want two top ten picks. That's what he talks right. about. That's it. They don't. They're not interested in anybody that wants to trade down. They just want to take their pick. Would you take? No, I know. I understand that. But if you're the Oilers, but if you're the Oilers, trading the fourth overall pick for Hamilton actually makes a lot of sense. It's a. It's he's a big right shot defenseman what's, who what's can have more offense. Six and a half. Six and a half for. Oh no 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 no! Give me a second. Uh, his contract. Boy, Calgary's got all the cap room too. Um, they do. Five, uh, yeah, five five point seven five, and he's got five years remaining. Yeah, I would I would probably take that deal. I think. Yeah, I would too. I I would absolutely take it for the for the fourth pick straight up. Uh, boy, uh, boy, Calgary's young. Look at this. That they got Colborn, Gaudreau, Monahan, all RFAs. Are uh, they all RFA? Yeah, they're, all they're, RFAs. They're, they're, they're on they're on pace to get those raises, right? I mean, they're there. They'll they'll be getting that. I think that's so. What that's do you give? Why what, they, they're trying to free up cap. What do you give? What do you give Monahan and Goudreau? What are they six million a season players each? Uh, they're gonna have to be right. They well, it depends if they take that bridge, right? I mean, of course, every team's gonna be gonna be gunning to ask him for the bridge deal, right? Every single team out there's look. Yeah. Everybody takes a bridge. Can you take yeah, a bridge? but you can't ask <laughs> Goudreau to take a bridge. I don't, I don't think they're going to give them a bridge. I think they're going to lock them in if they can. Yeah, because they're trending upwards. They're just, you're asking to pay a huge price tag when that bridging. Well, too, the Flames, have, the Flames have, at as of this moment, $23 million in cap space. Yeah. You know, it's not like they're, it's not like they're hard up against cap. They'll probably <laughs> they have a lot of stuff. Smead. Yeah. Is Smead still on their payroll? He's still on their payroll. What a clown! That's awesome. I'm, LB looks pretty damn good right now. Yeah. I was always happy with that deal. I've always liked Bossois. I still think he's going to be a good NHL goaltender too. Well, he's just young. Just give him time. He's yeah. He's a kid. That's like everything funny. else in the world, there's. What's that? Smith, Smith should be coming yeah. off next year, though, right? I mean, he's it's, it should be his last year, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 in, his, in a recent um, um, interview, Shirley was saying that he was not necessarily convinced that he has to that Brissois needs to play another year in the AHL. It's sort of borderline, right? His thought was, if we get another goalie, we get another goalie, and if not, we'll 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 break Brissois in. So it's uh, I'm okay with that. He would be getting many games of... anyway. He didn't play all that poorly, considering. No, he didn't. His first three losses were like, I think he lost. I think one time they got shut out. Yeah. But then, then his costs started but I mean, snowballing down, right? And well, the team in front of him was garbage. And and what are you supposed yeah. to do if you're a goalie? Like, like Talbot had the ability, the experience, and the ability to save the Oilers a couple of games this year. Like he he won some games for them straight out and. Uh, their record could have been worse if they would have had uh, Scrivens still as oh, their goalie. Like it would have been. Scrivens wouldn't even have lasted because they would have got run out of town. Like yeah, literally, exactly. Run out of town. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where do you guys think Stamkos ends up? Uh, Detroit, if they can move. 
What's that? Sorry, go ahead, Richard. I, I was going to say Detroit if they can move uh, Datsuk's contract, and if not, they're Buffalo. Those are the two. And it, you know what? I'm going to throw out a third name uh, just because I have a gut feeling, Nashville. This could say, yeah. Nashville, and the reason is, is Nashville is very close to um, to being good, like really good. True. Uh, they can find the money if they really need to. But I don't know. Who, who knows, right? Yeah. Uh, Toronto's convinced he's going there. Mm, eh, whatever. <laughs> no, I hate that. Well, you know, like, they'd have the money. They'd, I don't know why Stamkos could do, would do it. Like, that's the whole thing, right? Is like, if no, you remember, if you remember to... back to the, okay, you remember back to the 2015 draft lottery, and Connor McDavid's sitting there, and he obviously wants to play at home. He wants to go to Buffalo or Toronto, and he wants to be close to his family. And the camera pans to him, guess what, you're in Edmonton weather, and the look on his face was, oh, crap, Right? Yeah. Now you take a look at his face, you know, eight, nine months later, and he's like, I'm going to play here my whole career, and we're going to win cups, and I'm going to love the place. Um, but he's he's 18, and he comes from a family where that's kind of the attitude of the parents, too. That's how he's brought up, and that's just how he is as a person. Stamkos is at an age now where he's probably going to start thinking about winning cups. So does he think to himself yes. what's more important? You know, what's more important, playing at home, you know, with, with in Toronto with his family, where you're guaranteed not to go anywhere near the playoffs in three years and probably not near a cup chance in five. So are you going to want to go there or are you going to want to go to a team that you say to yourself, okay, this team's a contender, this team's close. Like, to look at St. Louis. They're going to be losing back as probably to free agency. Could St. Louis find a way to get Stamkos? And then what does that do? Well, that, Can you imagine Ter- Tarasenko and Stamkos on the same line? Well, that does actually free up because Bacchus is, uh, Bacchus is, I believe, six and a half, right? So it does free up the space, but do they have that extra cap room to be able to bring in a Stamkos? If you move Shattenkirk, if you move Shattenkirk and you uh, don't re-sign Bacchus, you do. Well, that, I think the team, I mean, like, like we're literally, it's on the eve, right? I mean, tomorrow, what is it, tomorrow at noon for you guys it starts, right? No, it's uh, uh, Edmonton uh, time. It's 5 p.m. Edmonton time. So, so tomorrow at 5 p.m., right? Right. Yeah. So we're there. I think that if Stamkos is going to sign somewhere, it's got to be a team that's ready right now. Okay, you guys well, going to help my... me? With, okay, you guys going to help me with a project here? I got to get something to write on. Do you think Stamkos you... sits for a week after free agency opens up? And no, I don't think he's that guy. I think I think he already knows where he's going. Yeah, I think he already knows where he's going. Toronto. But I think okay. that's a big part of the part of the whole Subban thing is they might be trying to go after Stamkos, and that might make them a little bit more well, not look more enticing, but it, it might free up some room for them. I don't see how losing losing uh, Subban to get Stamkos makes Montreal a better team. I don't think it makes them a huge better team, but I think that they can. I think that well, what are they up against in the cap? Montreal. Yeah. I think they, I think they spend their money. Yeah, that's what I think too. I've got a I've got a Let's friend see. here who is a Montreal Canadiens fan, and he thinks that they should get rid of Pacioretty and they should 100% keep Subban. Montreal is actually uh, right now six in expenditure, sixty-three million. So they have about ten million of cap. Yeah, they have nine in a bit. What do they got to resign? Yeah. How many they got? Uh, uh, nobody Money. good. Yeah. <laughs> there are a failure. No, no, no they're, 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 they're really a bold statement. They don't. A lot of Montreal fans don't think there's much good there at all. Well, no. You look at okay. So I'm looking at the roster. Clancy can play hockey. Patrick can play hockey. Gallagher can play hockey. Desjardins, I can't stand the guy's name. That's the only problem I have with them. Desjardins, what a weird name. It's like mayonnaise. It's, it doesn't work. Eller <laughs> can play. Uh, Galchenyuk can play. And after that, bleh, the rest of their forwards. And then defense, well, Subban, of course. Markov, who's about 137 years old. Um, Jeff Petrie, which is an embarrassing, an embarrassing contract on Jeff Petrie. Um, well, from what I've heard, though, he's played extremely well in Montreal. From what they're saying, they were ranting about him, saying he played, he's played okay. 
No. <laughs> no, he really didn't. He played okay for a while, and then he started to suck. No. He went back to being the Jeff Petrie in Edmonton. Like, Petrie in a lot He's of ways got a was... movement, too. Holy shit. Petrie, Petrie uh, the thing that frustrates me about Petrie is it's the same sort of thing that frustrates me about watching, a, let's say, a Teddy Purcell play, where you got a big body, you can skate, and you won't hit a single thing. And it's like, no, hit something. Be mean. Play mean. Play, play aggressive. Play like you care. Hmm. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to skate. And it's like, you know what, if you're in the Western Conference, like the biggest problem the Oilers have, literally, as a team, and finally they got a GM that was to recognize this, is that nobody's scared of the Oilers. People come into the building and walk all over them. And that's not the way it should be. Like Maroon, it's, it's funny, I kind of attribute a lot of this to Maroon because Maroon's kind of waking everybody else up, going, no, yeah, this, should, yeah. this is our house. This is our house, and if people come here, they're going to pay a price. Yeah. It doesn't matter if we win or lose, they're going to pay a price. No, the so when you're putting in, this is why I'd love to see them get like a Hamannuk. Hamannuk makes people pay a price when you play against them. You remember, when the, when the Oilers had, um, you know, when the, 2006 and around there, where they had a pretty decent team, but it was a, a bunch of grinders. Like it was your Ryan Smith hammer the puck in front of the net guys, your Jason Smiths and, 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 and Steve Steos, you know, blood and guts players. Well, you actually win some games with blood and guts players. You have too many pretty players in Edmonton, not enough guys who are just willing to hammer it out and, and make people pay. And I think management's finally realized that. And I, I, I would like to see them gut the bottom two lines and make this the nastiest, the nastiest bottom six to play against. Like, literally, just make it a house of pain. I, I, make I like it a house of pain. Oh, I agree. I agree with you, but the I like having is... Hendricks back there. I like having Cassian. I like I like Maroon down there. I would like them to pick up one or two more guys. A Bacchus would be nice for that. Bacchus would be a fantastic signing for the Oilers. Yeah, that would be like fun. I would trade I would trade Nugent Hopkins straight up for Bacchus if they were uh, you know both in the yeah. contracts. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know contracts. Oh yeah, because Bacchus makes people pay a price. He's a dirty, gritty player. Nugent Hopkins more talented, no question. Well, Bacchus right. brings so much more, again, those, those like I've said this a hundred times, intangibles, you know, uh, those things that you need in order to build a, a good hockey team. And Bacchus... And they're not teachable either. Those are unteachable things. That's right. That's, that's exactly David right. Back. It's, it's grit. It's heart. It's desire to win. It's 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 the emotion, like loving to play the game, to play the game, as it was yeah. said, right? And he and, and, really showed his and, value in the playoff run that St. Louis had. I think Bacchus was... was their best player, uh, almost night in. And, and uh, talking about the entry draft, Dubois is the nastiest player in that top ten. Like in terms of what he does, he's 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 a gritty, nasty, dirty player, and you you kind of want that. The Oilers need that. They need they need guys who can uh, who don't mind uh, cracking some skulls. Like in Sandpaper. you know that that 2016 that just about won the cup. They just gritted it out. That's all they did. Is they just, but they, they, just they, they struck lightning in a bottle, right? Quit. That's that's the thing I was getting at is it, you can go and fill that your back end of your roster with those guys, but the thing is that you need your top two lines to carry that through as well. well I think, so I think we're, we're so close to that already, I, and I think that's the biggest problem is those complementary guys. Like I said, if, 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 it, if it was me running the show in Edmonton, Eberle out, Bacchus Lucic in, uh, and I would even go, go go as far as to sign the other guy just outright because, I mean, we have the cap room to, to add another one of those two guys anyway. But the, what throws a real wrench into the whole, you know, my theory is this expansion draft that's coming up because that that brings a whole new dynamic on who you sign for length and what ends up happening. Yeah, but, like, how much can you handcuff yourself to the expansion draft because it's a constant, right? You know that you're going to have to – you're going to lose one guy. So you got to make it so that you're not leaving a really, really desirable player out there. But, uh, you can't but think about your it. The, needs and making your team better just because you're scared of expansion. Well, but the others can, the others can, the others can protect their entire top, top nine though, because when you think about it, McDavid won't. They won't have to protect McDavid. He's ineligible, and whoever they draft this year is ineligible. So that's two guys out of your top nine. So you get to protect the other seven. Like you have your top three lines protected. The expansion draft doesn't scare me at all. 
unless you're talking about leaving a who you're who you're going to lose if you're the others is you're going to lose Brandon Davidson. That's who it's going to go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And well, because Brandon, 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 bringing a guy like Hamannick or Barry or Shattenkirk, one other guy's got to be left off. Well, no, Nurse, you don't have to protect. Yeah. Sakara, they put a clause in it that you can ask a player with a no-movement clause if they're willing to go unprotected, so they may or may not do that with Sakara, but let's say they keep him. So Sakara and the two right-shot defensemen, they go, well, okay, let's say this. Sakara, Clefbaum, and a right-shot defenseman they get this year, whoever it is, and yeah, then yeah, Nurse cool. is protected, and that's your four, the four that are protected. You're, so you'd lose Davidson. Davidson's the guy you go. Which is sad because I really like Davidson, but you know, you also have Reinhardt, who who should theoretically develop into an NHL defenseman. Uh, Dylan Simpson, they have to bring up and start playing him because they said he's too smart to be in the AHL anymore. He's a really good prospect. And and Ort Osterley, he he looked like yeah. an NHL defenseman last season too. Yeah, I think he's right. And, and there's lots of talk that Griebe is not going anywhere, so that the others are going to re-sign him because they like his size and his grit. He's a, he's a good he's a good five six defenseman. So I you know they have people. I wouldn't want to lose Davidson, but if you have to pick between losing Davidson, let's say, and losing let's say Eberle because you can't protect him, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. I'm not I'm not worried about the others forwards at all. I, they're going to be able to, they're going to get through the expansion thing better than a lot of other teams. And the other thing is, is that they're going to have the ability to make some crazy ass trades when teams start unloading because they they're scared of expansion. That's where well, your that's Oilers could get a yeah. defenseman. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not overly worried about expansion either. I don't think I don't think Shirelli is. He knows. If that's the thing about it, it's a constant. You're gonna have to leave someone unprotected. You, you can't sacrifice the now just for that. Yeah. And I don't think he has to. So. I would, I, would, the others. I would go out and I would offer money in term, like I said, Eberle, Eberle type money in term to one of Lucha Trebacus, and I would sign one of those, one of them, one uh, the uh, the other one that you just don't get, or or Oposo, any one of those three guys, I would be uh, elated to have up front. And I think there's roster room because, like I said, I think Yakupov's going to go, and maybe Eberle goes. Like there's going to be roster room, like. Oh, You're yeah. not going to sign these guys and then lose them to expansion. There's places for them. Yeah, of course. And Pouliot's probably not going to be around if you bring that No, in. Pouliot's going. Yeah. <laughs> too many left wings. This is just too many left wings. It's not It's not really anything against Pouliot. It's just Luchitz is a better version of, of Pouliot. So which one are you going to keep? Well, yeah, really you got I think, what? Anyway, I think he, has, he definitely has value too. I think there's some team that would take a Pouliot, I think. Oh, yeah. I think he'll be moved, to, uh, if not tomorrow on Saturday, he's going to get dealt. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, hey, I, I just had a thought. You're, you're, you're. It's Friday there, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I, can't, I won't. I'm not telling you what's happening in the future. Nice try. This doesn't work. <laughs> that this does not work that way, Richard. I get in trouble. You didn't see the show Heroes? Come on. <laughs> Come on. I thought that's how it worked. <laughs> I, I get in trouble if I do that. Freaks people the out. Time, the time space <laughs> continuum. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you guys warn us about 9/11? 9-11. They, there we go. 9-11 has been brought in. <laughs> Al-Qaeda, terrorism. Let's yeah. let's get the FBI watching these, okay? CIA. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Strike no, that from the record. Sorry, I just I can't do it anymore. I, I, I'm trying to keep this thing afloat, and if I freak you guys out, you won't be back. <laughs> Not going to happen. Uh, Can you imagine? Okay, well, I hope you have at least air conditioning over there. You were saying what? It's like 38 today. Oh, there's a, not every house has air conditioning. I have air conditioning in every room in this house. Mm. Here's one second. You have to. You, if you you don't have air conditioning here, you. I'm a typical Canadian. It's about 19 degrees outside. And my air conditioner is off right now, and I'm just boiling. Oh yeah, you wouldn't such be. A, a, you wouldn't like it here Canadian. in the summertime. The summertime is uh, is brutal. Hot. It's humid. It's mm -hmm. Uncomfortable. And for the, those people who are keeping track of the uh, the uh, British referendum to leave the EU, uh, the leave uh, the let's leave side is only a, about a million votes away from winning. So there you go. Oh, well, there you go. I don't I don't I don't follow that. So. 
it's it's the value of the uh, you the British pounds felt to take a pounding. So. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I have a friend there. Like I said, I I seen some of his um some of his posts on the uh, on his Facebook. Vote to leave. I, I was just like, what does that even mean? I don't. What do you well, think? Uh, yeah. about the rumors about Bishop going to Calgary. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want him to get Bishop. That's why? Why would Tampa? Why would Tampa want to get rid of Bishop? Well, if they want to re-sign Stamkos, is, is from what I've heard, because they have to make a decision. Oh, it's a money thing. Oh, yeah, it's okay. A, money thing. It's a lot of their. Well, you have that kid who's pretty. Is Vasilevsky that good? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't think. I don't think he's uh, at this point in time much of a, a. He's a step down, but not much of a step down from a bishop. And I think that once Tampa sort of got used to the situation with having him back there, they would be okay. I mean that that team at Tampa is really good. I think they're, yes, yes. You know, they're defensively. They're, they're, yeah, they're a they're a, a trade deadline defenseman depth pickup away from a Stanley Cup championship. To be very honest, yeah. if they keep Stamkos. Yeah, now, if they get rid of Stamkos, who knows? But well, I think they can operate without him, though. I think That's a guy maybe. getting rid of a guy like Bishop is definitely uh, something that they could swallow having Vasilevsky. That's a good goalie, though. Oh, jeez. That would that would be something for us Oilers fans, right? So, well, <laughs> yeah. the, the, oh there's, talk, there's talk that yeah. Flurry was on his way out of Pittsburgh because of how Matt Murray performed in the playoffs. There's talk that uh, Bishop might be the uh, the guy out in in Tampa. But again, oh, the, I'd love Flurry. I'd love Flurry to go to Calgary. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I heard exactly. the asking price is their first round pick, though, and Calgary said no. I'm not sure how much truth. Are you is. kidding? That, oh yeah, I heard that too. That's pretty yeah. high price, right? Yeah. It's garbage. Um, oh. But there, there's there's such a small market for goalies in the NHL, right? I mean, Dallas would love to be able to grab one of those two guys, but they've already got ten plus million wrapped up in their two guys. Um, Calgary's another place that needs a goalie, but that's really about it. There's nowhere else that really needs goaltending in, in, in this league, and there's a lot of goaltenders that are going to be out there. Well, I don't think it's that saturated, though. I think there's a lot of guys that would like to improve their goaltending. Yeah. Even I can't name them off the top of my head right now. But <laughs> there are guys. That, if, you, if you put those guys out, I think there's a market for both Flurry and Bishop outside of yeah. those two teams. But I don't know. You'd have to look at their cap situation and all that. Uh, I might have to sign off, guys. All right, that's fine. This was a good, good first, good first show. Well, um, like I said, I'd like to try and do this once a week with you guys. I mean, if we do, if we do sure. get a lot of um, extra uh, followers and it does get a little bit more popular, maybe we can start doing it a bit more frequently. But uh, once a week, I think, is okay. Um, I don't know if you guys maybe want to get together like just shortly after the, you know. The big day tomorrow or whatever it is, but uh, I'll, sure. I'll, I'll be there yeah, anyway, so we can yeah, uh, definitely keep some stuff going. Excellent, yeah. No, I enjoyed it. Yeah, we yeah. Some good, it was a good time. That was a yeah. good hockey talk. talk. At least, I mean, that was nice hockey talk. Well, I don't have to go spend three hours on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> We probably do. We probably missed everything. PK Subban's probably already been dealt since this whole thing started. No, I just check. I just checked. He's, he's, he's still a big, a big pile of nothing. I have a computer up and running while all this, this is exactly going. why I said the hockey outsiders. We have zero claim to anything. We don't know a goddamn thing. We're just here, you know. The, just, the TSN website right now is reporting about the Thai Cats beating the Argonauts. Let's just put it to you that oh, way. Oh, she, she's a dead so, night. There's not nothing's gonna move between now and. The, the draft anyways. It's oh, a silly yeah. time to make a trade. Oh, uh, the draft you... floor could be pretty funny tomorrow though. There there could be some there could oh, be some yeah. hilarity. That's gonna I think, gonna, I think, I think there's gonna, gonna be see a, a big lot move of moves. Tomorrow. I think there could be a lot of moves tomorrow. Yeah. But I mean every year you kinda you go into it with that kind of hope <laughs> and then you, you come away with it and is uh, it was <laughs> back great. There's usually some moves. I mean, there, it's you know, it's the biggest night of the year when it comes to trade stuff. So I think that there's going to be okay. some, some moving for sure. So final, final, final thought for me. Final thought for me. Right. So if you're the Oilers tomorrow, would you give something up? Random pick, third round pick. Let's say St. Louis for back as rights to negotiate with them. I would. Rights to negotiate? Sure. Yeah. Of course I would. Yeah, yeah I would too. I would. 
No. Nope. I, I completely. Uh, the, the way that the trend has gone with the league, everybody who's who's been willing to spend that little bit of value to get their rights have almost every single time signed the player that's at, that's gone to visit. Well, that brings up the thing. Do you think these guys aren't talking to him beforehand anyways? Oh, of course <laughs> they are. Yeah. But still, maybe I, I actually have a great story about bar. that one. I have a great story about that one in Justin Schultz and the amount of conversation that was going on between the Oilers and Schultz while he was still a duck. And, and it was lots of um, emails through friends. Yeah. So exactly. there was no direct there was no direct conversation, but, but it's yeah, a conversation. It's all cut out, right? Yeah. I think, you know, like I, if the others yeah. if the others wanted back as back as was open to coming here, they they already know this. Maybe they haven't talked term or anything like that, but yeah. they already know. Well, they did. That's one of the I, one of the big rumors that's out there. I think the report is that Lucic is 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 keen on coming to Edmonton. I've heard that. Yeah, he he is, and for and his relationship with Shirelli. Yeah. But um. And McDavid. But uh, and 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 the team, the Kings have allowed him to talk to other people, which they can do, and and now they're already having conversation. But the 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 rumor that's been out there for a while now is that Shattenkirk does not want to come to Edmonton, and he's made it very known that, that he has no interest. He has yeah. no interest in playing in Edmonton, and that's probably why you wouldn't see a trade for it, because if the player doesn't want to stay here, you know, like what's the point? What's the point? And he's not really going to put it all out there next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he doesn't want to. Be he he player. will if he wants to get a, a big contract out of somebody else. He, he'll be 27 or whatever his age will be. But you know, like the Oilers, they unfortunately Edmonton has to deal with the Edmonton factor. Of course, it's like Winnipeg. People don't want to live in those cities, uh, even though these are hockey markets. Where if you think if you're a hockey player, you'd want to live in a hockey market, but. The players well, don't really. I don't think. I don't think players particularly. If you're Steven Stamkos, do you really want to play in Toronto, where you're gonna have people oh, yeah. following you around and bugging you every moment of the day? Like, like, <laughs> uh, I I think Stamkos. If if players are gonna pick a destination, it's gonna be a place with golf courses and drinks, well, and coconuts, and Anaheim is kind of looking like that might happen. He likes it down yeah. there. Ooh, yeah. he can you stay imagine? on the beach oh. and do what he wants. That Ducks team would be sick if Stamkos ended up going there. They do have the cap room, but from what I know, they have an internal budget. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have a lot of money. No. Yeah. That would well, be sick. Gets left, Stamkos, Perry. Oh, that would be disgusting. That would be hard to be <laughs> Well, gentlemen, I, uh, I yeah. give you a good day know. then, and thank have you. Good night, guys. Thanks again. Like I said, I'll be in touch, and maybe we can do another one of these in a couple of days just to kind of talk about some of the stuff that's gone on, and um, I'm happy. Yeah. Um, I'll, staying, try, I'll try to find a fourth as well, um, so I'll be out looking to try and find a fourth. Um, hopefully we can, you know, I mean, if you guys want to stick uh, the three of us together every time, that's fine, but if, you know, on the off occasions that somebody can't make it, we'll just have, you know, a list of people that can kind of just come in. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good with this setup right now. All right. Um, I'll be. I'll talk with you guys a little bit more about the website and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, Richard had mentioned that he's, you know, he, he may have something on the go as well. Anyway, so maybe we can just work with that one. Yep. Yeah. Is that cool? I have a lot of writers. That's that's the one thing I I have at my disposal is a lot of people who want to write for me. So. Well, there you go. That's a really good start. So maybe we'll just uh, maybe we can just use that as sort of the. We'll the jump way to off. Through instead of starting up a whole another one ourselves. Excellent. Is that cool? Perfect. If that's just that's me that's me pitching to you, Richard. I'm pitching uh, uh us. <laughs> well, no, the, the us thought the thought the thought with coming on with me. It's it's the other way around. You know, well, we the thought with the website is basically what's going to happen is that there's going to be uh, at least thirty writers, um, because I want somebody to cover every team. Yeah. Um. Uh, we also want to bring in a number of podcasts and have them running different nights. Cool. Um, yeah, do a weekly roll. There's, there's three or four different podcasts that I know of of people who are looking for a home. So that's kind of what we would do is there would be a broadcast schedule, and those would run, you know, pretty much daily sort of thing. Different one goes up on the site. Yeah, I'd be um, interested in doing something right along this lines. Like I said, I have uh, I, I don't mind talking hockey. I could talk about it for days, but I, I don't do any writing. I don't have time. 
Um, I mean, yeah, I'm, writer writers are a special breed. <laughs> yeah, you you you, um, you have to find somebody who has a um, a lot of time on their hands. Yeah, like to be any good at writing, you have to you have to put a lot of uh, thought and effort into it. And you have to. Although know I, good, which is which is a big. Uh, although I'm actually blessed, that's the one thing I'm actually good at. My writing is not particularly good, but I have one thing going for me. I can put out the most volume of anybody I know. I can absolutely put out. Huge amounts of writing. Um, yeah, I can. It's just, it takes me thirty minutes to spell words properly. I got to spell check it on my computer. Double. Oh, no, that's part of the fun, man. You spell everything <laughs> fucking wrong. It's fun no, for no, you. That's part of the fun. fun. Yeah, I find it. You read my blogs, and they're just they're just chaos. They're just it's chaos, and that's the idea. Is that uh, bloggers get it wrong? They they try and retell what the sports media do, and there's no interest. There's not there's nothing interesting about it. Well, as I no, a blogger's supposed to. I'm a, a blogger is supposed to talk shit. That's that's what you do. You talk shit. You throw handfuls of poo. You're a monkey in the zoo throwing a handful of your own feces at fans of the other team. That's that's awesome. what a blogger is supposed to do. Throw hands full of feces. And that's... and I want to do that with thirty other people. Well, this is uh, like I said. I'm I'm in. If you guys are, I mean. Uh, I, I, I have to say, it's a, uh, it was, I have to say thank you to both of you guys for actually doing this for me. I know it was sort of just like uh, yeah. kind of off the cuff, and I appreciate both of you guys coming out and spending the time. Um, yeah, it's great. Extremely yeah. successful first show, I think. I, I, I'm really happy with the length. I'm happy with what we covered. Um, uh, in closing, for me, uh, fuck the Leafs. <laughs> there's, there's throwing poo at its best right there. You can't you can't get any more. Yeah. More good, better at throwing shit. You can, you can also fuck the Canucks, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent, <laughs> right. gentlemen. <laughs> Take care, gentlemen. That's great. Yeah. Talk to you guys soon. That's a good sign off. Talk to you. Right. Bye bye. Later, boys. Yeah.